Dr. Kieran Murphy, who's trustee for the Association of Child Protection Professionals. Kieran, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. We should stress that hey, we know their siblings because DNA tests have been done that prove it be almost almost beyond doubt, which raises so many questions. Not least, people will be thinking, how can two parents do this not just once but three times now? Yeah, Matt, I, I think the first thing to say is it's, it's a, a deeply upsetting case. Uh, it, you know, it, it, I've heard several cases of children being abandoned in, during the course of my career, and everyone uh, causes upset. So I think that's the first thing to say. Uh, it, the origin of this, there's three themes, I think, and you're, you're starting with the uh, last one. I think the first theme is welfare of the children. We'll probably come to that. The second theme is the welfare of the parents, and we'll probably come to that. The third theme is why this is happening. And it, we can only speculate at this point, Matt. I think that uh, when I was talking to your producer before, I was saying that it perhaps isn't as simple as people jump to uh, in terms of an explanation. There's, that We know there's growing levels of destitution in this country. Mm. That can be an origin. Uh, that 50 years ago, uh, children who were born out of wedlock, it brought great shame on into certain communities in this family. We know that still continues now. That could be... Uh, a variable within this case. Um, I, I, I don't think it is... I think it'd be simplistic to have this idea that there are two parents out there uh, conceiving children who then uh, uh, abandon them without also thinking that there must be some kind of crisis within their life. And only time will tell what that uh, crisis or that origin will be, I think. Uh, but again, um, I think the reason this is so upsetting is that for each of us, our identity, our origin has a great impact upon us. And the idea of children being born and then being abandoned is highly upsetting, not least because it's that feeling of not being wanted, which I think will resonate with lots of people. It is a challenge for child protection professionals. Uh, and I think that brings me back to the first theme. First and foremost, we have to be thinking about the welfare of the child. Uh, including the privacy of the children in this case. And I know there are certain restrictions about what can and cannot be reported. Yes. I, think it's, I think it's useful that we're acknowledging that these children are siblings. I think that will be important in terms of planning for them into the future potentially, but also in them understanding their origin in the future when they look back and try and understand how this happened to them. Yeah, and, and the reason we can talk about this is things have evolved in terms of transparency of unusual cases like this. What we do know is the older siblings have since been adopted. We know that Elsa is now doing well, thankfully, and is in foster care. And we hear, I think, and I think it'd be good for you to expand upon this, they will know about each other. The, the, the Elsa will, at some point, when they're old enough to know they might have a brother and a sister, be told that which has to be a silver lining in all this. Yes, absolutely, I think so. Um, and th there are different reasons why parents uh, can't raise their own children, but it is always good to hear that the identity of the children can be maintained. So uh, I know that there is a plan for Elsa to have contact with her older two siblings. Uh, and whilst at the moment I think the investigations are ongoing, so there's no firm plan about her long-term care, I think there is a tentative plan, certainly from the local authority side and within the family court, that she will have contact with her siblings, hopefully throughout her childhood and, and her life course. And therefore, you know, there will be a sense of identity and, and also shared experience uh, uh, for Elsa, because I think, you know, when she looks back at the, on this, and she'll have no memory of it, of course, but when she looks back, it'll be quite a traumatic thing to mm -hmm. think about in terms of a, her origin. So that shared experience will be important for her as well, I think. Kieran, quick word, because as we said there, this is incredibly rare. Babies being left on their own once is also incredibly rare. In your experience, just to finish off, is there always a crisis at the heart of that? There's always a problem behind people doing this? I think there's a difficult question, Matt, but the parents out there will know it would take a lot for you to relinquish your child. I worked for 10 years in, as a child protection social worker, and what I would say is that of all the children who needed to come out of their parents' care, those parents most often fought tooth and nail to keep them within their care. And that's what I usually would experience. Uh, and likewise, children, even children who had suffered abuse, would fight very hard to stay in the care of their parents. So I think yes. that this is unusual in the sense that children are being abandoned, being relinquished, and that suggests to me that it isn't a simplistic case of a middle-class 
uh, uh, family who can't be bothered. I, I would still expect there to be lots of love there for this child, but yes. also that there's a state of crisis, which means that for whatever reason at this moment in time, they can't care for them. And, you know, if they haven't felt able to approach professional services for whatever reason. Dr Kieran Murphy, appreciate you taking the time to join us here on Sky News this evening. Thanks, Matt.